welcome everyone to the monthly meeting isha monthly meeting i'm glad to see so many of you have come here today today this is a new location and we have been struggling to find a uh, a location that is sort of permanent but nothing is permanent here <laughs> right and uh we have been trying to work on this building uh, meeting hall in bruce so hopefully we'll get started uh, this year sometime you know we are hoping that in couple of months hopefully the construction will will start and talking about impermanence you know that things are not permanent here uh, recently we lost two great souls uh, don uliberry donald uliberry who was a great friend of ishwaji he he was living with ishwaji for uh, 30 plus years i believe and uh, you must have seen him drive ishwaji around uh, everywhere and so uh, he had turned 90 recently and uh, suddenly his health uh, deteriorated and uh, you know he left us uh, i used to meet him often because of company work and uh, he was doing well and suddenly i found out that okay he is uh, not doing so well he was in the hospital and uh, you know uh, and things kind of went south from there uh, great soul you know i had some wonderful memories with him uh, i was fortunate enough to meet somebody who has given ishuji company for such a long time and ishuji whose picture you see here of course most of you know uh, those of you watching online you know for the first time maybe this is my master ishuji uh, ishupuri and uh, so uh, don was really lucky to give him company give ishuji company for such a long time uh, he was a isha board member as well as president for some time uh, probably i i do not know uh, this was before my time uh, before i got involved with isha uh, uh, but he served uh, isha for quite some time and of course he served his master ishupuri ji uh, another soul that left us was george aiken i came to know uh, about him couple of years back uh, he was living in california and uh, he went through uh, he was the isha president uh, he held that position for one year and uh, uh, he uh, he went through some illness and then uh, recently uh, just uh, april 12th he left his body Uh, i was fortunate to to have spent some time with him he was a wonderful soul and uh, so this is the condition in this world that uh, nothing is permanent here and we are although looking for permanent condition as much as possible uh, we have to keep this in mind that nothing lasts forever and uh, ishwar ji who was a master you know even he left there are there have been so many masters who have come here lived amongst us and still they had to leave this body because this is this is the law of nature nothing uh, in this world is permanent and so if you are seeking permanence masters have come amongst us and told us how you can find that permanence that never changes that ultimate truth they said that it exists and it is possible to find it and it is only possible to find while we are in this body as a human being it is surprising that you know we chase things in this world we look for permanence we look for sometimes truth outside yet they tell us that you know nobody else can find truth for you you have to go inside and truth is within you the seeker is within you uh, you are not this body and you can find that ultimate thing that never changes what is the definition of truth truth is something that is everlasting right uh, what we see now let's say this room uh, this picture of course we can experience it experience it for some time but then it changes we also change our body constantly changes since we have been born we have been growing and we will die one day like everybody else like the satsangis who left us like ishwar ji who left us and all the other masters and yet somehow we don't realize in our uh, day to day living that this body is so short living 
you know, if you look at the age of this universe, which is, you know, a few billion years, 13, 14 billion years, in comparison to that, our life is so short. And in fact, the, the life of other uh, animals uh, or insects in this world is all relative. It seems to be very short. But if you look at their life, probably they're also going through the same cycle that we experience. Uh, and, and we forget this fact that uh, while chasing the dreams of this world, attachments of this world, that this life is for a short time here. And only in this life, somehow, we are able to find that ultimate truth, which is everlasting. That is so strange, you know. Uh, before I came to, uh, came on this path, before I met Ishoji, you know, I was also chasing a lot of these things. You know, like many of you, who have been probably since birth, you know, there's, there has been some pull, something guiding you from inside, that the place that you find yourself in, it is somehow uh, not the right place, because you see so much upheaval in this world, and your own personal experiences, right? A lot of people have gone through uh, difficult personal experiences in their life as a child, uh, as an adult, you know. Uh, there is this, life has so much variety. You know, no two experiences are alike, and no two suffering and joys are alike. Right? We, have, we have so many relationships that give us a lot of pleasure and at the same time that give us you know, sometimes equal amount of pain. Right? A child is born, it gives us so much happiness. I mean, I'm a dad you know, and my son is about to go to college so I, I realize the, the pleasures of having a child. You know? But then at some point you realize that the same child who was so cuddly, you know, who was so cute uh, running around when he grows up, he has his own, you know, uh, personality, and he would, uh, he can fight with you, you know, he can disob disobey you, you know, he can completely run in the opposite direction, and uh, he thinks that, uh, you know, uh, I don't understand, of course, you know, as he's developing his own personality, character, and uh, so it's obvious, you know, uh, I have been a rebel myself, you know, I've fought with my dad, uh, mom. So, you know, but uh, we look it through our own lens and see that this other person, you know, who was, who was so cute, you know, so loving, and yet he's rebelling, you know, he doesn't listen to you. So, of course, it gives you a little sadness, you know, uh, and you wonder, you know, what has happened to this guy, you know? And so everything that, uh, that gives us pleasure at the same time has a potential to give you equally uh, amount of pain. And if you see this creation that we are experiencing all the time, of course, you know, there is opposite all the time. You know, there's high and low, there's a day and night, there's light, darkness. Everything seems to come in opposite. There is nothing that can be experienced in this life that doesn't have an uh, equal amount of opposite. In fact, uh, I've uh, uh, read some, you know, scientifically also, a lot of scientists have theorized that the creation that we see this actually comes from nothingness, uh, and out of nothingness, everything is created. Uh, some scientists, you know, who have a uh, little more philosophical, artistic bent, you know, who, who were able to uh, have uh, extraordinary experiences outside of this physical realm, uh, came back and told us that, uh, you know, the, the planets, objects that we experience, and the space that is around us, you know, they are in equal proportion. And so the solids like Earth, sun, different uh, planets that we have, they get created at the same time, the space around that seems to get created. And if you take out the space, there won't be any object floating in it. It's strange. And uh, so I feel that uh, not only in our experience, you know, subjective experience, we see that uh, there is opposites, <coughs> there's pain and pleasure, there are a lot of emotional up and down. And in terms of uh, scientifically measured uh, things also, uh, uh, like, you know, you can look at the sunlight uh, and you can, uh, you, you can see objects, and yet in the dark you cannot see anything. There, are, there seems to be, uh, uh, you know, contrast, there seems to be opposites, and they are in quite, uh, there is a scale between them, there is a spectrum of things that we experience. And so, uh, you know, if you, uh, and masters have told us that you know, anything that is born has to die, right? It is the rule of this nature. It is the law. 
you know, and it is ever changing. So uh, they have, because of our situation, because we have been trying to, uh, we have been feeling in our heart that this is not our place somehow, you know, because we don't like so much ups and downs. We have maybe experienced enough of this life that a part of us seeks to find the ultimate peace uh, because something tells us that this is not our place, this is not our home. And masters have told us that we can indeed find that permanent place, the truth that is everlasting, never changing, uh, the place that is also called Satchit Anand, uh, that is truth, uh, knowledge, the highest knowledge, and, and bliss. Sat means truth, Chit means knowledge, and Anand means ultimate bliss. So there is a place where, uh, what, what, that is our uh, true home, and we belong there. And yet, we don't experience that in our life, right? And they say that we are just uh, bodies, we are just made of material, but this is not our true identity, because our identity constantly changes. The cells, the, uh, the molecules, the atoms that we are made of, that is constantly changing. Its shape, form, the way we look, our face changes, we grow, you know, our relationship changes, uh, not only physical dimensions change, but emotional dimensions, our relationship, those things constantly change, right? The, and, uh, and in fact, people have, in their own experience, they have seen that uh, they remember that they have been here before. They can recollect their past life. They can, Ishwaji used to give accounts of few people uh, in his family and others as well that uh, have experienced that they have been around this uh, this world in, in previous life. And uh, some of us maybe have experienced in our own life that uh, we get a sense of deja vu that, you know, we have been here. You know, some certain circumstances uh, seem quite familiar to us. And that is sort of a guiding factor that tells us that there's something more than that, uh, that we commonly experience in our life. And so it's wonderful that, you know, the masters like Ishuji, you know, uh, and great master come here uh, amongst us. They give us company and show us that, uh, that there is a way. They teach us that there is a way to experience our true form while living in this body. And while we are living in this body, we have ability to experience that thing that most of the other life forms do not have. We have, you know, Charasi Lakh or 8.4 million different life forms. When I heard this, I was surprised. In fact, I sometimes ask Ish Ishwaji, how did this number come from, you know? How can somebody figure out, you know, uh, somebody probably human being must have figured out. Uh, and this is written down in some Indian text and uh, apparently there's a compilation of all the different life forms, uh, 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 mostly lower life forms and then 400,000 higher life forms. And amongst them, you know, this particular human form that we are experiencing today seems to be, you can call it the highest form in which we have been endowed with this very special ability to be able to seek, to be able to say that what I'm doing, you know, is either right or wrong. We can ourselves pass judgment on our actions. We can deliberate on certain choices and make decision. <coughs> and none of the other, like plants, you know, animals that you see, insects, so many life forms, uh, they don't have that choice-making ability. The, the choice-making ability, the free will, you know, although it's called free will, we experience it as uh, our own choice-making. But what masters have also told us that, you know, we ex the experience is of free will. It feels like we are the one making choices. Yet, at a higher level, it can be experienced that this is all predestined. It has already been written that way. And so imagine we see so many people in this world, and uh, somebody just wrote to me that there are, you know, almost uh, 8 billion people living in this planet, right? And out of that, just look, look around, you know. In this hall, probably we are 20 people sitting here, and there are satsang probably going on uh, all over the world. And so, you know, you can, you can count them on your, uh, probably not on your fingers, but, you know, you can, you can it, it must be in maybe thousands, 
hundreds of thousands at max. That's a very small number uh, if you consider the population of Earth. But if you consider the, the, uh, the species, the, the life forms that are on this planet, it must be in trillions. Somebody said that the number of stars that we see in this universe exceeds the number of sand particles on this Earth. So just imagine, its uh, mind cannot comprehend the amount of variety that is out there. So in comparison to that, you know, just imagine just few of us sitting here, you know, listening to satsang. We used to all listen to Ishaji satsang, right? Uh, and we have this seeking. And we, I, I find myself and all of you extremely fortunate to be able to have that even thought that there is uh, a place that is beyond us right now uh, and that could be our home and this is definitely not our home because of uh, you can look back and say that okay I was blessed with the life that I had even though I had a lot of difficulty you know I went through a lot of uh, personal circumstances you know I have also been through a lot of personal circumstances that led me down this path only looking back uh, I can appreciate that okay probably it was a gift if I hadn't been through that tough period in my life, there was no way I was, I was going to come here. You know, there are so many other beautiful things, uh, attractive things going on in life, you know, and we have uh, passion for work. I had passion for work and career growth, you know, material things, a lot of money, you know, a lot of objects, cars, houses, relationship, and so on. Uh, definitely, I would not have looked back, uh, you know, and... and uh, and evaluated why I'm doing anything in particular way, you know, because life would have just grasped me. Uh, I was in Las Vegas, and I was amazed that at two o'clock in the night, there were ladies in the uh, slot machines, you know, just smoking and then uh, throwing the changes and and having strange kind of fun, you know. And at one time, I could also appreciate because I did that myself, you know, but. Uh, uh, few years down the road, you know, I just could not understand why somebody would waste their time in this way, you know, when they're so close, uh, and mostly they were probably retired folks. Uh, but the same, uh, not only that, uh, you know, there were other attractions uh, in Las Vegas, and Las Vegas itself was created to give this glamorized attraction, entertainment for a lot of people. I know Ishwaji used to go there, you know. Uh, but he could always, you know, live in so many worlds in, in parallel that, you know, it's not a right analogy probably, you know. Uh, but for most of us, yeah, we go there for entertainment, right? Magic shows, uh, different kind of adult shows, you know, a lot of rides. And uh, we go there to relax, you know. But somehow it uh, creates an impression on us that we keep going back in, and, and enjoying it more and more. And... Uh, if you have ever tried to detach from these things, you realize that how strongly you are attached and you don't even realize. And not only Las Vegas, but there are so many other attachments. In jobs, we have attachment, right? We, have, we are attached with our houses, we are attached with our car, small, small things, like the chairs. You should used to talk about, you know, people who wanted to see him, yet they could not see him at the last moment because they had to buy a chair or a sofa you know, and they missed opportunity to meet uh, a master, right? Such is our, our uh, tendency, you know, such is the world. And in fact, the world is doing its job. You know, this, as masters have said, that this world was created to, to experience something else, something that doesn't exist in our true home. If in our true home, all we are experiencing is truth, knowledge, and bliss, what is the point of creating this world? And so this world was created to experience something that is not available in our true home. And through analogies, they have said that uh, only when we go back, we will we'll be able to truly appreciate what we created. Because as a souls, we'll be dancing in joy. And other souls who did not uh, left the Sachkhan or the ultimate home, they would be surprised that they are equally in bliss. What is the difference between us who experienced this and went back versus them who did not even think of leaving that place. And we would be telling them that you don't know what you're missing. You don't know the kind of experiences, ups and downs we experienced, which is not experienceable in that true home because that is the place of ultimate bliss. So it has a purpose, but 
as long as you are enjoying, you are having a fun time here, uh, enjoying all the attraction that the world has given you, and maybe a little bit of miseries, you know, then, then it's great, you know, because this world was actually created for, to give you that experience. But at some point, we have a tendency to get stuck in that experience. What do we do, right? I mean, we find ourselves stuck somehow, that we can't get out of this. So if we decided to come here from our true home, if we left our true home and got trapped here, it seems like we, there's no way to get out, you know. And then masters have said that it can't be that we did not come here uh, without any plan. You know, we just jumped in this experience without any plan. If we had, if we are all knowledgeable, if we, uh, if as a creator, we, we could determine what kind of experience we wanted to have, and then somehow chose this experience where we are trapped in this misery, you know, we are not a creator in that case, you know. And masters have said that we are actually a creator, but we are experiencing this individual life, individual identity. We have separated from this, this totality of consciousness, that one soul, one, you can say, super soul or creator that can experience everything. Ishuji gave this beautiful name, totality of consciousness, totality of awareness. So soul has this awareness and it can have, uh, and it is consciousness. By definition, cons consciousness means the ability to have awareness, to have awareness by itself and to be able to perceive things, to be able to conscious of other things. In fact, uh, uh, there was a master called Raman Maharshi. He, he also wanted to get this realization. He wanted to understand who he is, you know, and of course he must have heard from other masters that, uh, that we are not this body, and, uh, and he wanted to find out what happens when we die, and he was seeking truth. So he did this experiment on himself, that he tried to remain still, completely still, and he acted as if he's dead. <clears throat> And in the process, he found out that even though his body was almost dead, and he was, because he was able to still himself completely, he realized that part of him is still alive. He's still able to think. So he wondered, what is it uh, about me that is alive? You know, if I'm dead, am, am I dead completely? Or am I still alive? Is there a part of me that is still alive? So masters, similarly, other masters have told us, so there was a master called Swami Vivekananda, and uh, he came here maybe 100 years back, 120 years back, and he said that all of us are divine, divine beings. Uh, we all have divine potential. It's just that we haven't realized it. We are equally divine as the creator. If we could only find out uh, the true potential in us, then we'll realize that we are divine. And so we are that we are part of that uh, soul. We are part of that ultimate consciousness, but we are not experiencing as that ultimate consciousness. We are because we wanted to experience something else, and we went on this adventure out of Sachkhand, and here we are. And the question is, you know, if can we can we go back? We feel that we cannot go back ourselves, but if we're uh, if we had all the knowledge in the world as a creator, why would we create something that, uh, that will lead us down this path where we, we feel we are stuck? We cannot do anything about it. But Ishuji used to say that indeed we had a plan. It cannot be that uh, we are so dumb to go into a, a recreation ride uh, like a Disneyland where we don't have any, any way to come back from Disneyland back to our home. We, of course, do not want to call Disneyland our home. And we don't want a situation where we can never get out of that place. So indeed, we made a plan. And the, plane, the plan is actually beautiful, that you know, we feel helpless in this life uh, as a human being. And we have been endowed this special ability of seeking uh, through free will. And we can judge the situation we are in we can look at how things are going in our life. We take our deliberate action into making choices, 
and we can we feel that we can determine our own life and through seeking at some point we get you know tired of living this life tired of all the uh, different relationships that we have formed that give us a lot of trouble uh, or sometimes we don't have enough material wealth and so pain comes in so many ways and we are trying to get out of this pain or sometimes our curiosity is so great that we truly want to find an answer to all our situation and because of the of the way we have set up the show we have made arrangement before leaving that place that we call our home and made sure that if a situation ar arose like we are experiencing today there will be help along the way and we have already uh, planned it out you know and ishiji used to say that uh, all the masters who come here amongst us that has already been predetermined you have already as if uh, uh, he used to give an analogy of picking up a dvd when we in such khan you know we decide that okay we want to have a completely different experience because as a consciousness all you can do is experience uh, anything that you want to experience and you want to experience something that you don't have immediately right in if you are completely in bliss and you want to experience something other than that so this world of duality is created and then we have a choice of picking a dvd and look at life around you we have picked up so many different dvds you know no two life is identical so consciousness made sure that you know it is experiencing in variety you know and amazing that there are so many varieties as i told you the number of sands uh, are less than the the stars out there in this world so uh, these are and these are large heavenly bodies we are talking about and imagine the the creation that is spread all over so what kind of experience this consciousness uh, the the totality of consciousness is is experiencing and it is experiencing all this life through us because we have that part of uh, totality of consciousness that is embedded in us that we call soul and through us that the creator is experiencing the whole show and although trapped in this life we can't uh, comprehend how how can that totality be experiencing but ishoji talked about totality of consciousness you can you can experience that and masters have said that only in this human body uh, it must be such a gift that we have been given this special body through which while we are alive we have potential to experience that totality of consciousness and be, become one with it and experience the show that that creator is having and so we don't need to look outside we don't need to go into temples read books because they point us inward all masters who have lived a life here just like us you know a, a, a mortal being uh, suffering like us uh, having financial difficulties having uh, medical issues and and a lot of masters have gone through a lot of what seems like a torturous life you know sometimes even uh, you know difficult life than a, a, a normal life uh, great masters himself he broke his leg and uh, you know he suffered quite a bit he used to ask his own master for a lot of help and uh, a lot of other masters have lost their child you know uh, went through financial difficulties so i feel that you know they through their own example they tell us that you are you are no different than than me uh, who can uh, you know uh, through their master's blessing can have this gift of going back to home and can experience that uh, that identity that is same as the creator uh, so they encouraged us uh, to find this this place find this experience uh, that is truly ourselves so they pointed us only inward we can go and find the truth and they have given us techniques to go back home uh, to experience something beyond uh, beyond what we normally experience in this waking life life i mean in in our common experience you would see that uh, you know of course we are experiencing this world through the senses that we have but when you go into dream when you sleep in the night you know we don't experience this world in the same way you can feel that sense of time has disappeared the time has time works in a different way somehow you know i have i have had so many dreams you know 
uh, in fact, I used to get tired of dreaming uh, because that would that resulted in me not having a good sleep. But such was my condition. You know, sometimes I would lay awake, you know, hoping that uh, uh, you know I could experience something else. And so somehow a part of me would be awake and then would experience thing and uh, and wake up and think about you know what I was experiencing. So those of you, this is a common experience, a relatable experience. Most of the people have the dreams. And you would realize that, you know, somehow you are given a, a completely different body to experience. And so it seems like there, there is a, a dimension where you can, you can be somebody else, right? So uh, it will give you a slight hint that it's possible that you are not this physical body, but you are somebody else. It's possible that you could be somebody else. Ishiji used to talk about uh, Fahin, a Chinese philosopher, who saw a beautiful dream in which he was flying like a butterfly uh, in the garden. And he saw a lot of colorful, colorful flowers. And he was surprised to see the vividness uh, of that dream. And he, upon waking up, he related this dream to his friends, that he uh, was a butterfly. And of course, he was challenged by his friends, you know, who of course, you know, a man talking uh, and claiming that he was a butterfly, that could not be true. But uh, uh, Fahin's experience was completely different. While he was dreaming, he was completely convinced. And even after waking up from the dream, he believed that he experienced himself as a butterfly. So you can have those, uh, if you're blessed or if uh, through luck, you know, you can have those wonderful experiences that unlock a part of you, you know, that makes you think, what is it about this this world, this creation, you know? Uh, of course, scientists, you know, uh, try to explain away things materially, you know, through laws of nature, but uh, they still cannot explain or they cannot see your dream. You know, this is such a personal experience that you can uh, talk about these things to other, but uh, it will be hard to make a believer out of somebody else who, who doesn't want to believe because they haven't had that experience. And a lot of people, uh, um, uh, a lot of saints in the past have had these experiences and through stories they have uh, conveyed uh, that uh, th the life that we observe right now is not the only reality. There can be so many other realities. There was a king called uh, uh, King Janak. Master Ishuji used to relate some of his stories. And one time uh, he, uh, he, after his, having his, uh, he was, because he was a king, he had a sumptuous meal and then he uh, had a little nap. And then in the nap, he uh, went into a dream. And he had this vivid dream where he was fighting with his neighboring state and went into this vivid fight. And he lost his kingdom. And uh, he became like a beggar, uh, going from street to street. He was really hungry. And then he was amazed at uh, his condition. He thought he was a king, and yet he was suffering. And he kept thinking in his dream, why this is happening to me? Eventually, after a lot of struggle, he woke out of the dream. And he was so disturbed by the dream that uh, he could not distinguish uh, one reality from the other. Because he, at one point, he thought he was a king. And uh, he had this kingdom. And yet, in the dream, he was experiencing uh, a life of a, of a poor person who has been evicted from his, his uh, kingdom. So he could not decide what was the reality, because you can experience such realities in your, uh, in your dreams uh, or uh, through other experiences that is almost indistinguishable from the experience that we are having now. And Master Ishwaji, of course, talked about different levels of creation where you can have different experiences. And so I think one of the trick is how to forget our body. So when we go to sleep, you know, we don't have the sense of this physical body, this material body, right? And out of that, because we are conscious being, we have to experience something. So when we go into the dream, we lose consciousness of this body and some other body, you know, shows up in our dream and we experience this dream body. And, you know, I have experienced flying around, uh, falling uh, from great height, you know, uh, playing with animal, you know, I'm sure a lot of you must have had. So what, is, what seems to be common is that we, we still uh, carry on this uh, notion of uh, 
who is experiencing? You know that you are the one who experienced this dream. Fahin, when he woke up from the dream, he said he is the one who dreamt, dreamt it, right? So this, there seems to be a continuity in uh, uh, this uh, part of you that is experiencing, even though the experiences are constantly changing. You're not experiencing your body all the time, the same physical body. You don't have the same name. You don't have the same relationship in your dream. You carry on a completely different identity in your dream. You take on another body. And you, you don't have these physical senses, yet you experience through some other senses, right? And Ishiji also talked about a causal plane where you can experience everything at one time. We don't have to have these uh, uh, senses, you know, the physical senses that through which uh, we experience right now. Uh, we don't have to have uh, those senses split apart. Right now we are seeing, hearing, tasting, touching. Those experiences are completely apart. And the way we believe this world is uh, uh, actually a material place or uh, there is nothing beyond that is by corroborating one, one evidence against the other. And if we find multiplicity of evidences that, telling us, that tells us uh, about the same object that we experience, then we believe that it is actually true. When, we, when I knock on this table, you know, a sound, we can hear a sound, uh, and I can feel the table, and we can see the table, and we sort of uh, cross-check one evidence against the other, and we end up believing that, okay, yes, it must be true, that if I'm able to see, if I'm able to touch, it is there. You know, sometimes maybe you, you, you can imagine, you know, but when you are able to hear it, you know, and you can, you can ask another person who is also looking at it, whether the table is there or not, you, it gives you a reality, it gives you objective truth, right? This is how science also works. So we end up believing these worlds, the creation around us, and, and, and definitely we can't get out of this. And the masters have told us that there is a way to go back inside and find ultimate a, a reality that exists beyond this. So if we are able to at least get a glimpse of what could potentially exist outside of the, the normal life that we live in, it creates a window, a window of opportunity through which we can maybe uh, uh, try our best and try to practice the way masters have told us and try to, get, try to make the window bigger, try to go out of that window and experience something else. So dream uh, example is often given, uh, you know, Raja Janak's example. He, uh, upon waking up his, uh, from his dream, that was very real, he uh, called his master and uh, wanted to understand you know, whether me as this king living now, is it real or the dream that, was, that I was part of, that was real. And Ashtavakra, his master, at some point, you know, once he started looking for answer, finally Ashtavakra gave him this answer that uh, King, King Janak, uh, you are, the person that you experienced in the dream was not real. And the person that you're experiencing right now is equally unreal. Nor dream was real, nor this physical experience is real. You are beyond this. And in time, he was able to realize who he truly is, truly was. And so is the case with all of us. And masters, through their own experiences, have uh, related that you know, they are as ordinary as us, right? Through their suffering in their life. But uh, because of their master's grace, their own master's grace, they have been given this, uh, this experience that, uh, you know, uh, that gave a conclusive proof that they are not this human being. You know? And not only just them, but everybody that we see around us, you know, uh, living in this human being as a human being, they can have that experience. So they are as ordinary, uh, sometimes more ordinary uh, than other people. Because, you know, if they are not ordinary, if they have special power, then we won't be able to connect with them. Probably we would think that, okay, this person, you know, who he claims to be a master, you know, he has some supernatural abilities. And so, yeah, he can have that grace and he can achieve this place where uh, he, he can see himself as the creator. He can be one with the creator. He can watch the show, whole show because he has these special abilities given to him because he's not a human being, you know. But he shows that as his example that he is equally a human being as the rest of us. And so that gives us a hope 
and uh, through the special uh, unconditional love that only masters at that level can shower us with that. You know, because they are overflowing with so much love, they can see themselves as the creator, you know, and they see all of us as part of that creation. You know, they see that we are truly a part of this consciousness that, ha that have limited the awareness. And if that, that limitation wasn't put in, we could not be experiencing uh, completely different facets. Look at the, the, number, uh, the amount of life uh, that is there in this world, you know, and everybody has its own perspective. And this creation is constantly going on. It's uh, endless, right? So amount of experiences that can be had by the, uh, the creator, the totality of experience, is just uh, unfathomable. You know, we, we cannot even imagine with our small brains uh, living this limited life that it is possible. So it is such a wonderful gift that, you know, out of so many billions of people, out of so much trillions of life forms, we have been given this ability and we have the companion of this, these masters amongst in, in our life that they encourage us to go uh, and seek inward and find the truth ourselves. And they encourage, I mean, they, they give us techniques. They, uh, like a teacher, you know, uh, they give satsangs and uh, they encourage us to seek the truth inside. And, uh, and they give us this special love and they initiate us and they say that, okay, your struggles are all over, you know, because you have been a seeker and we can only seek in this life. And because of our seeking, they are compelled to come amongst us and be our friend. And so we have been so lucky to have Master Ishwaji amongst us. And I'm sure a lot of other folks have experienced different company of different masters. I've known so many satsangis who have uh, been uh, blessed to uh, be initiated with a lot of different masters, including Ishwaji. And so the best we can do is uh, remember the teachings that uh, he had left with us, uh, especially in my case, my master Ishwaji. And uh, through uh, his grace, you know, he has, he has given me this work, which I'm, uh, you know, uh, trying to do as best as possible, you know, in this impermanent world you know, trying to seek different venues. And I'm so glad all of you are here to give me company and uh, really encourage me, you know, uh, and, and give me advice. And I'm truly thankful to all of you. And uh, with this, I would like to conclude and uh, remember Master's message, you know, that's the best we can do. And, uh, and we'll continue uh, to see you, uh, hopefully in a little more permanent world, uh, which will be in, in Bruce. Uh, and we'll continue to do our best, you know, that's all we can do. And he always said that do your best and leave the rest to him. And so, uh, and uh, there was a mantra also that was coined, you know, Sadguru par karo bharosa, you know, fir kuch na karo afsosa ji. So leave everything on your master and then don't have any regrets. So I think that's the, uh, and a lot of small, uh, you know, small tidbits or mantras he had left, like, doesn't matter what's happening in your life, ups and down, you know. Say so what, you know. And I tell, I try to tell that to my son, you know, and he of course gets mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I try to do that with myself, but it's I know it's hard, you know, uh, because we still have this uh, the responsibilities, you know, a life that we have to live responsibilities, uh, 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 different roles that we play uh, in our relationships. So. Uh, we still have to keep doing that and masters through their own life they have shown that they they never let go of the responsibilities they had they had their own jobs right they performed their regular duties uh, so we uh, we still have to you know we are part of the show you can a part of you can can observe the show and and appreciate the the life that you have uh, the ups and downs you know you don't have to get too attached to it say so what you know and, uh, and try to live the example that, uh, you know, masters have shown themselves. And so I hope to see you uh, soon. Uh, next month, uh, the satsang is going to be from Bruce. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a Memorial Day weekend. So, and I'll try to do some of the seva in the garden myself, you know, which I truly appreciated while Ishuji was here. So I love doing that. And it's my opportunity to again go back there and see the construction you know, that is about to happen and, and meet uh, a lot of folks in Bruce. 
So I hope I'll be able to see some of you, and uh, uh, if not in person, then through YouTube. Uh, thank you so much.